The Miu Mini Plus is what we will get from Go Retro moving forward. The Miu Mini is essentially not being produced anymore, so if you want a tiny solution for your games, then this might be the best option. I think they made the right move in a lot of aspects, and I'm here to give you a full review of this device. So introducing the Miu Mini Plus right here, and let's dive right in. The exterior design consists of plastic for the entirety of the build, but this device is built really, really well. It's super solid and it has a great amount of heft to it, almost like they really have to pack a lot of things into this small of a body. I also went with a transparent black design and I think it looks really good. On the front, you're going to find all of your buttons and D-pad. On the right, you're going to find absolutely nothing. On the left, you will find the volume rocker. On the top, you will find the sleep-wake button. On the bottom, you will find a headphone jack, micro C card slot, and a USB-C port. On the back, you're going to find your triggers and battery compartment. The buttons on the front feel really good to press, and the D-pad is very solid. A very good option for retro gaming without a doubt. The triggers on the back are much clickier and feel much better now to press down on. This is a huge improvement that I strongly welcome, as well as being easier to reach for thanks to the size adjustment, I would say. This device is much bigger than the original Miu Mini, and a little smaller than the RG35XX, which is a great size for such a pocketable device. This device features a 3.5 inch 640x480 IPS display that looks very nice. It gets bright enough for outdoor usage as long as it's not too bright outside. The screen is very nice and it does offer a very colorful view. It's a higher resolution than the original Miu Mini, so there are going to be greater hardware requirements to support this resolution. The mono speaker is pretty decent. It gets reasonably loud and frankly, I'm pretty satisfied with what we've got here. So with that said, why don't you have a listen? This device features an ARM Cortex A7 CPU, 128 megabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage through the micro C card, and a 3000 mAh battery, so the battery made a pretty big jump, which is definitely appreciated. So the Miu Mini comes with stock firmware that is extremely bare bones, does not allow for a lot of customization within the OS, and is designed to be as simple as possible. I like it for that reason, because it's so easy to use, but it doesn't give you a lot of options for tinkering, and it doesn't look the best either. So I would strongly recommend getting custom firmware installed, firmware like on the OS for example, and try and get the most out of your device but as it is, that you will have a very prevalent experience out of the box. So we're going to be testing out a few systems here, beginning with GBA. I tested out Pokemon Red and got stellar performance. Granted, this game couldn't be that demanding, but it is still great that this game runs as well as it does. Actually, every single GBA game that I tested on this device runs very smoothly. Sonic Battle, Final Fantasy games, the Legacy of Goku games, absolutely everything was a total joy on this device. Now this level of performance is definitely expected from a device like this, so I'm not too surprised, but it is still nice to see these games running so well, and considering how much this resembles the Game Boy, it's just really nice that it all looks so good here. SNES performance was a very similar matter. I just had a really good time here, as, as SNES is another system that is very easy to emulate at this point, so nothing really struggles to run it, and Mortal Kombat 3 was my example here, with very ideal performance. There were some issues with the audio, but I don't think that it had to do with the performance, as the issue was just with the repeating certain sound cues, so it might just be an issue with the ROM itself, but overall I didn't have this issue in any other SNES game that I tested, like Chrono Trigger for example. And lastly, we got PlayStation 1 performance. Uh, this is because this really can't run that much, which was also uh, handled very nicely by the way by this device. Everything looked pretty smooth with games like Final Fantasy Tactics, so I'm definitely satisfied to know that all my RPGs will run nicely here. However, don't fret because I tested racing games and fighting games and got great results from all of them. So I would say that the PlayStation 1 experience is guaranteed to be a success for many people. Now let's get into the battery life. So far, we are looking at a 3000 mAh battery that should allow for 4 to 5 hours of playtime. And considering the low resolution, the kinds of games that you will be playing, I think that that number is totally achievable with the Miu Mini Plus. 
at least from my experiences. Granted, my playtimes are not that long in, in succession, but uh, usually split up into various play sessions. In conclusion, this is a proper successor to the Miu Mini, but if you already have a Miu Mini, then it's not worth the purchase unless you really want a bigger screen. Because for the most part, they're really similar and they play the same games. But if you don't own a retro handheld and wanted something compact to take with you or to start with, then the Mini Plus is exactly the one I would recommend. I would even recommend it over the RG35XX, which I love so much because this device is still smaller and similarly powered. So I love the Miu Mini Plus, and I think that you will too. So with that said, this is definitely a worthwhile purchase, but it is worth acknowledging that this device is considerably more expensive than the original Miu Mini, which is one of the things that really attracted a lot of people to the original Miu Mini, is that it was so tiny, it could play up to PlayStation 1, and on top of that, it was only around $50 to $60. When the Mini Plus, from what I have seen, I think I spent around $80 on it. So there is definitely more of an investment to be made there for what is essentially a similar experience experience. But it's not like you have much of an option at this point. Well, you could either choose between the RG35XX and the Miu Mini Plus. And it's going to depend mostly on what you're looking for, but both of these are going to be pretty similar. And the Miu Mini Plus does have a lot of things going for it. And I would say that battery life could be one of those things as well. But the buttons are fantastic, the D-pad is really good, the screen is really nice on this too. This is just a really solid device. So, as much as I love the RG35XX, I think I like the Miu Mini Plus just a little bit more. Which is why I'm a little more comfortable giving this a recommendation instead. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. I do very much appreciate it. Um, no affiliate links for this one because I don't think it's going to be available on Amazon. So I'm just going to try to leave a link to go retro down below. Now, with that said, you can follow me on other social media. You can find me on Twitch where I will be streaming again pretty soon. Grad school has been taking up a lot of my time, so I do apologize for that. And uh, you can also find me on Instagram. You can message me over there in case of anything. But please make sure to leave any of your comments and thoughts down below because that does help me a lot in the algorithm, of course. Now with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and until next time, enjoy.